back here, um, it's been weeks since we had cedar and we just brought her back. Now, um, it's interesting, I've had her for a couple days and she's no less excitable. Um, she, I think what's interesting is for me, in, in my hands when I put her on a leash, I do think she's a little more responsive than with my parents. Um, I just think she takes advantage of them a little bit and I think it's partially because of there's just not a, a sense of confidence on the other end of the lead. Um, I think my dad handles her mostly and I think he's a little bit hesitant because I've seen him with her and he's just not real confident with her. And so I think he's doing his best to control his frustrations with her, which is good because I don't think you're going to benefit anything by becoming frustrated and, and letting that um, come out. But I also think that his lack of confidence is part of the problem. So she's back with me. Um, we're going to keep her for a little while uh, and see where we can go. Um, again, just just looking for foundational stuff. I'm not, she's not, they're going to, they're not going to hunt with her. Um, we want her, I'd like her to make some retrieves. I think it's fun for him to do it. Um, especially because they're on a lake and they can do a lot of water work. And, um, so we've started a little bit of retrieving actually this weekend. Um, she's terrible at it. Uh, she doesn't like to deliver. Um, she, she occasionally likes to run off. Um, so we, we'll talk about that as we get going, but I've, I've started using two tennis balls and because I've got two, she typically is coming back at least. And I'm just, I'm just paying very little attention to when she decides to lay down and play with it. She likes to lay and roll over the top of it and stuff. So I'm just ignoring that. Um, it's, it would be very frustrating if I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to create this retriever. So I put myself in the shoes of a lot of, um, people that are watching this and, and because a lot of you have aspirations to hunt with them and, and do some of the, the stuff that we're doing with our other dogs, um, that could become very frustrating and that is w really um, counterproductive, I think. Uh, so I, I, I have the luxury of not having that pressure and it's probably what's going to help me get past it. We'll sh I'm going to try to share that with you. Um, but you can see pretty nice job of settling in right here. Um, as long as this little intro is taken, I haven't seen her um, become too distracted. Um, she is full of puppy. I, I should check. I think she's about six. She's about seven months, I think, old. Um, so it's to be expected that she would have a lot of puppy in her. But her personality is what um, is very different um, than what I like necessarily or am used to. So I think it magnifies the necessity and need to slow things down. She's just a, a very fast, wanting to move very fast and uh, makes real poor decisions when she moves fast. So, Cedar, heel. But I also think that it's real clear that she's pretty smart. Um, she's an intelligent little dog. And so I do think she's capable of making changes behaviorally. It's just gonna take a lot of time and consistency. So, I mean, this is a pretty nice pace, but you can see it's driving her nuts. She's actually borderline thinking maybe she should sit down. Good, good girl. Heel. So for our first session back, now I've had her for a few days and I haven't done this yet. But you can see that just that's, that's a sign to me that's just driving her nuts. She's swinging her head back and forth. She's in between sitting and healing, sitting and healing. There's a little bit of noise, so she becomes distracted. Every time there's a distraction, I'm gonna, and she starts to pay attention to it, I'm gonna move the other way. So there's some trailers coming down the road making a little bit of noise, and that was a really good turn. Good girl. And again, these are the easy turns. You know, I'm turning away from her, going at a real controlled pace. Probably pretty easy for her to, to pay attention to the changes that I'm making. Just like that. Good girl. And I, I do think you got to look at that loose lead. So my dad has a tendency to really be stiff with it and rigid. And it's something that I have to work on with him. But it's something that he has to be confident enough to do. He has to believe that she's going to make the turn with him. She has to believe, he has to believe when she stops, she's, he stops, she stops. Heel. And mechanically... You can help her with that. 
by giving her the loose lead, by starting with your left leg, by being pretty black and white with your, with your actions. We're not trying to trick the dogs. I think sometimes we get in this habit where we want to trick them to see if they can figure it out. Well, hell, if they don't know what they're doing, how are they going to ever figure it out? Heal. So I do think for forming these behavioral things, we got to be really, really plain and simple. Now I'm going to turn into her. And this is where you see a lot of excitement in her. Good. I don't like that hopping. And then all of a sudden, just that alone creates a little bit of an issue for her coming off of heel. So we start to heel out and she wants to play with stuff on the ground because this, this is that key where we get her too excited. So turning into her gets her really excited. There's a good turn, good. So I'm going real slow. Trying to turn into her to help her turn with me slowly. Good, good. Good. That surprised her more than hurt her. It didn't hurt her. Surprised the hell out of her. Watch her feet now. Heel. Heel. Good. A nice little distraction going past Ben. Can turn into her. Good. Good. Nice and slow. Good. And I think it's interesting too if you notice just the just since we started turning into her. So when we were turning right hand, nothing nothing real. Now I confused her. She got used to that turning into her. And now when she sees a change of direction, she almost gets a little bit jumpy. So let's slow it down there. By the third time, she's picked up on it. First two, she's real jumpy and... S Good. Now, by the third and fourth, she goes, oh, I remember this. We'll just turn nice and slow. Then we'll change it as soon as she gets used to that. I'll change it and turn into her nice and slow. Good. Good. Very good. Heel. All, my whole my whole objective is here is to just to get her to do stuff without freaking out. Good. But what I was gonna say was, she really when we turned to the right, she really didn't. I didn't see anything physically with her. She was pretty cool with it. As soon as we started turning into her, that's when this little game of wanting to reach down and grab a leaf. It's when she started to pant real heavily. Like all of a sudden she acts like we're running and we've done something real tough physically. We haven't done anything tough physically. We've done some things mentally. Good. Those are good turns. Good. So the challenge has become mental and that all of a sudden gets her panting heavily. I mean, it is a little bit of stress to her. It's a little bit tiring for her. This is where the idea of balancing mental and physical exercise to me is the most important thing. It can't just be, can't just be running to get them to start panting and be conditioned. If all we do is run with them, they become just really good athletes. And it just takes a lot more running to tire them out. We're not physically burning a lot of calories here, but we're really challenging her up here in her head. Good, sit, sit, good. Good. Now, we, I don't know, it's been weeks since we've done this. And I don't know that my dad feels real confident with this. I know they're not practicing it. I'm quite certain they don't practice it. This is just a good test of the amount of time I can keep her focused. Good. I'm gonna get past her in the back real quick so that she doesn't have a temptation to spin around. Very good. And then I'll slow back down. Good. But this is probably the most slow paced session of work she's put in in a long time. And it's just, this, this has to become 
more regular to the point where it's the norm. It's just what we do. Good. Good. Doesn't need a lot of excitement here in praise. Just I want to let her know that was real good. Heel. Heel. Sit. Good. Good. So I healed her off there without without even picking the lead up. So that was nice. That was real nice. Heel. Then I'll go back into a little bit of these turns. And I might mix it up just because I'll see how she's see what she wants to do. Now, you want to see her get wound up? Watch what happens. Watch how I can get her wound up. We'll just speed things up. See what that change did? Just speeding things up a little bit and we all of a sudden go. We're having a real hard time focusing. So I don't want that. I want to eventually be able to do that. But we're not going to accomplish it in one session. So we're going to slow our turns down and get good at that. Very good. Very good. That's what we want. So we're getting better at doing it slow. When we first started doing this, we couldn't even make a slow turn. Hell, we couldn't turn into her. Good. Turning away is easy. Turning in is where we need to get a little bit more coordination. Good. I don't mind her being crisp and efficient. I don't want her lunging and hopping around out of control. Good. There. It's almost spastic when she gets hopping around. And when that happens physically, it's certainly happening, happening in her head too. So it's real hard to ask her to focus when your mind is just all over the place. And when your feet are all over the place, so is your mind. Good. When your feet are nice and controlled, so is your mind. Good. Good. Sit. Sit. Good. Good girl. So we're just gonna mix it up a little bit with some remote sit. I didn't even bring my whistle, I didn't bring my training bag, nothing today. Little distraction. Good. That would be something I like to do with my little gun dogs. Some clapping around, a little bit of banging. No big deal. Good. Good girl. Good. Very good. Good girl. For the first session here, we're not going to push anything too far. I don't want to have any, I don't want to have, we're not testing anything here. I want it to be real nice, light. I do think one of the important things with this dog is I got to reconnect with her a little bit. I tested it this weekend and it was a test that we did in the past where I just sat down on the stoop and I saw her and her tendency was lay down about 15 feet away from me. She didn't want to come up by me. She'd rather lay by herself. And so when she'd rather lay by herself, that tells me there's a trust issue. For whatever reason, she's afraid to come up to me. Um, I, it, it's not like I was going to kennel her up. It's not like I was going to put her on a leash, nothing like that. It's just free little dog wandering around. All I want is for it to have a tendency to go, I'm going to go over by him and lay down. He'll pet me. Sit. Sit. This is a drill that we've been working on. We take the lead on and off without, without her pulling her head out. Easy. Easy. And without her just sprinting with freedom. Sit. Soft lead now. I don't want her sprinting with freedom. Like she just can go. Easy. Sit. Good. 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 That's a good girl. And that's enough for today. So she's back in the fold. Sit. We're going to do our best to just kind of reel her back in, pick up kind of where we left off. I thought she was doing really well before she went home. 
Um, I don't know that, I think the probably the big, I don't know that she's relapsed much. I think the biggest thing is that I just got to get that trust back from her. I got to get her, it's a good test that I do is I sit down on the ground or I sit down on a chair and if the dog doesn't come over to me, and I'm not asking the dog to do anything in particular, but if the dog doesn't want to come over by me and get petted, uh, there's an issue. I think there's a problem. Um, some dogs are a little more independent than others, um, but either, even an independent dog that I consider to be an independent dog should want to be by me. I don't care if they want to lay down next to me and not necessarily be petted, but they should want to be by me. And so we got to get, that's going to be a, a gauge that right now she almost like wants to tease me. She'll go lay down and then she'll fuss around a little bit and kind of make a little commotion. And I think she's expecting a reaction out of me. I ignore her. So what I want her to do is when I sit down, instead of hanging up 10, 10 feet away, I'd like her to just come on in get a little petting and I'll let you wander, do what you want, come back in. I call you, I want you to come in and we'll give you a little bit of petting. We're not there yet. So I'm certainly, I'm gonna struggle to get her to bring stuff to me with it in her mouth if I can't get her to come without something in her mouth. Sit down, good, sit down. I'm not gonna let her lean into me like that, good. Good, that's enough, it's awful hot today. It's heat index in the 90s probably, so it's plenty, plenty for her. It's plenty for her focus, um, the attention span she's got at this point. Heal. So we're gonna heal her back up, she, she put her in, put her in her crate, and that'll be it for today. Uh, now she's not gonna stay in the crate all day. She'll go on place, and she'll be in the crate, and she'll come with me, and I take her for little walks here and there, back and forth to the shop. And but after a session, we're real particular about putting them up and letting them sit and think about it. Let them focus on what we just did and hopefully it sinks in a little bit. I think if we went from a session like this to taking her off a lead, sit, and just letting her run wild, none of it would, none of it, a fraction of it would stick. I think it's important to let this stuff kind of soak in and let them think about it. So we'll put her up and that'll be it for, for this morning.